seconds of earthquake tremors taught me the value of everything that I had taken for granted. I'm a woman, born in a middle class family. Neither poor nor rich, just right in the middle. And life was going very normally. I remember it was a Saturday morning at around 11.55 a.m. I was sitting inside my room on my bed with laptop on my lap, chatting with my friends. And suddenly, the world around me shook. I quickly ran towards the door. As they say, it's, it's the safest spot to be in earthquake. I searched for my parents my, and my brother, and all of us were screaming because our house was shaking sideways as if it touched the ground. And we all were praying for our life. Every single second didn't seem to pass by. And that was the longest and deadliest 60 seconds of my life. As the earth stopped trembling, people came out of their houses running. It's shocking how fast one can move when it comes to running for their life. There were these dreadful aftershocks every now and then. The rumors of newer earthquakes coming very soon, even the bigger ones, they were everywhere. The news of the, all the cultural heritages of the country completely destroyed. It was coming every now and then. The number of the dead people, it was increasing every minute. And everybody seemed to be confused on what to do and where to stay. The following one and a half months, we stayed in temporary shelter. And life was not normal anymore. That was on April 25, 2015. Nepal faced a severe earthquake of 7.8 magnitude, the greatest of the century, in which more than 9,000 people were dead, 20,000 people were injured, and more than half a million houses were destroyed. Since an earthquake survivor, ever since the earthquake happened, she has been living in temporary shelter. It is made up of CGI sit, the zinc metal sheet, and the oud. And it's very unhygienic there. It gets very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter. Imagine living in such a place for three years. And currently, there are 30,000 families like of her who are living in temporary shelter. The reconstruction progress of the country has been really slow because of various political and geographical reasons. And he is another earthquake survivor. In these three years, he struggled a lot, and finally, he is able to build a structure which he calls house. It is earthquake resistant, and it is made up of concrete. It fulfills all the criteria that the government has has announced as the building bylaws. But it has only one room, and he has a family member of six. So, do you think all of them are going to sit in there? No, they don't. So, what does he do? He brings his cows and keeps them in this safely built house and goes back to live in his half destroyed house with his family. His cows are safe for the future, but he is not. Currently, there are 800,000 houses being built in the country in the name of reconstruction, and most of them are similar to this kind of houses. The government gives a grant of 3,000 US dollars to the earthquake survivors to rebuild their houses, which is not enough money, and as a result, this kind of houses are built. A house, when generally constructed, unless and until some kind of catastrophe happens or disaster happens, it stands for normally to 50 to 60 years. And it is not just a place to live in, but also the basis for living in. Like the former UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill said, first we shape our buildings and later it sets us back, meaning how we build and design our buildings, it has a lasting psychological and all kind, all kind of impression and influences in our life. After this earthquake destruction, people are thinking that only the concrete houses built in modern styles are earthquake resistant, and they hesitate to build in our traditional styles. And as a result, all these earthquake destructive communities, they're losing their traditional value. They're slowly turning into Kathmandu the capital of my country, that is modern concrete jungle. Actually, the traditional techniques and styles that we had in our country, 
it was already quite earthquake resistant. Symmetry to houses with thick walls and long wooden frames running from one corner of the uh, house to the another corner of the house. This all very thoughtfully practiced since ancient ages, keeping in mind that Nepal lies in an earthquake prone area. Rebuilding should not only be the drive or the priority, building back better in a way that in a way that it doesn't fall back, preserving our culture glory. It should be the priority. And that's where my organization, Akura, fits in. Akura, Akura in Nepali means sprouts. I want my organization to be the sprouts of hope and resilience. Being an architect myself, I want to construct eco-friendly and earthquake resistant houses in traditional design. And on doing so, I want to revive the cultural ways. I want to preserve the cultures of my country. With my team of motivated architects and engineers, I want to construct community centers in different earthquake destructed communities together with the people. There will be a series of consultations. People will be involved since the beginning of the project, throughout the construction till the execution of the project, so that on the way or on the course, they learn or they get to know the hands-on training on how to build eco-friendly and earthquake resistant houses. Every community center will be the demonstration of the values of my organization and will be built as per the particular vernacular, vernacular architecture of that community and will be adapted as per the need of that community. And on the same course, we will find the interested beneficiaries and help them to rebuild in that way. For example, this is our first pilot project. It's a community center with library. The ground floor, it, it, it will be party rest house and a shop. And the upper part, it will contain a library. It will be constructed in the Sanku area of the Kathmandu. And it is habit, habitated by mostly the Newar people. And these Newar people, they have this glorious, their own way of architecture, traditional Newar, Newar architecture. And hence, it will be built in the same way. The beautiful aspect about Newar architecture is that it is built in the uh, built with the brickwork and the wood technology. They will, you will find a special kind of brick called dachiapa, which are waist-up brick, and they are red in color. Whereas the when it comes to the wood, these are very beautifully they have very beautifully designed and specially carved wind, uh, windows and wood details. Jo joints and when dressed. I say wood technology, you will see that every wooden joist and joint they are fitting together like the hooks and groups so that they fit into each other and they do not they act as a unit and they do not give up easily when it comes to any kind of disaster like earthquake we had so many cultural heritages old ones who which were built in this way and they didn't fall fall in in that earthquake of 2015. when i woke up that morning in the april I had no idea that I would be spending my next one and a half month in temporary shelter. I was lucky that my house was still standing. I could go back to it. But there are still thousands of people in the temporary shelters. The earthquake happened in 2015. Now it's almost 2019, three years. Don't you think it's high time that we rebuild Nepal again? In right way. Thank you.